Welcome back. Uh, I am so glad to have you here on another episode of the podcast, Porn Brain Rewire, with me, your hostess with the mostest, Dr. Trish Lee. Today, we are going to break down 90 days to quit porn. Is that a fact or is that fake news? All right, first, we're going to talk about what is involved in leaving porn behind forever, pornography, addiction, recovery. Number two, we're going to talk about what happens in your brain on your porn brain rewire. And lastly, number three, we are going to talk about 90 days. Is that real or is that just a false assumption? So let's dig in without further ado. When you decide that you actually have a porn problem, and that really can be quite the journey for some people, but when you decide that porn actually is a problem for you and now you are getting committed, if you're not 100% committed, you're getting committed to no longer consuming pornography. You may have figured out that it's bad for you, it's bad for your brain, there might be some heat or some pressure from your partner, and you've decided it's no longer part of your life, probably. So what happens is getting to 100% commitment is part of the journey. So when people sign up for my 90 day program, some people are in fact completely committed to no longer consuming pornography and they are willing to do the things that they need to do to be able to succeed at that. Other people have the notion that they are not going to watch porn anymore, but they're not 100% committed and that can happen across the 90 days. Now I will tell you the reason I'm talking about that, that is because it's a major factor. And so Always on the podcast, I try to give you takeaways that you can get out your leather or pleather journal and write in it. And this is the first question. Are you actually committed to the journey of Porn Brain Rewire? If you are committed, is it for yourself, for you, because you want it and you want the transformational journey? And is that commitment 100%? So write those questions down in your journal, and when you get done listening to this podcast, explore them for yourself. Do you actually want this journey for yourself? Are you willing to do the things that you need to? And are you 100% committed? Because across the 90 days is getting yourself prepared for many people and getting yourself committed and learning the tools, the techniques, and the strategies and beginning to implement them. Now, some people can create implementation and success across the 90 days. For other people, if they're not committed, that is part of the 90 days, getting committed. Then they have to double down on using the techniques, strategies, and tools. Others learn the tools and start to implement them. So this is a very personalized journey. So we're gonna talk about that more in just a minute, but food for thought and think about where you're at in particular. So what's involved? What is involved is exploring your ability to deal with uncomfortable emotions, discomfort, pain. So we know that when you watch porn, it creates a pain pleasure paradox, meaning that there's pain that you are experiencing, experiencing in your life and it pushes you into the screen, which is also pulling you because it's a super normal stimulus. It's filled with so much pleasure, super normal, more pleasure than you can find in the world. So the pain or the discomfort of the world pushes you towards something that's gonna give you a lot of pleasure. And for you, it's become porn. You taught your brain to use porn to offset uncomfortable emotions a long time ago when you were young, and it's been your go-to tool. So as part of recovery is, Number one, figuring out where the discomfort in your life is coming from. Many times it's unresolved trauma or dysfunction from the past. You may have had an experience like abuse that you have not resolved in your nervous system. You haven't processed it, integrated it, and allowed it to become free from your brain and your body and your mind. And if you have past hurt, like bullying might be another example, breakups might be another example, neglect, just not having a parent see your emotional needs and meet them for you, help you meet them for yourself. That can really take a toll on us over time if we don't explore what's going on from the past and how we're still holding on to it in our nervous systems in the present. 
also from the past is our programming. You didn't program yourself. It's the wild thing about the human condition is that we did not program ourselves. We were programmed by our parents, by our teachers, by our preachers, by our community, by our culture. We are programmed into the salient environment that we were delivered into. And that environment is what programmed us. Now, the beauty of figuring out what your programming from the past is, is that your programming can be changed. It can be updated. So when you update your programming, you can become the authentic, true version of yourself that's inside locked inside your inner child, and you can become the best version of that little kiddo who got locked in the first time he found porn. You can unlock the cage, let him free, and let him go do what he wants to do in this world and become the best version of himself and heal those wounds on the inside when you do it. Wounds from the past, programming from the past. That is one of the first things that needs to be explored and resolved. And there's techniques and strategies that you can use to do that. It's super powerful. That's one of the first modules in my 90 day program. And I get emails all the time, how painful that was, but how necessary and how freeing those strategies are. And some, a lot of people email me, how long do I stay here? Cause I have a lot of junk to take care of. And I, I tell them stay there for a little while, figure it out, integrate it, keep moving in the program and go back because for many of us going back into the past is not a one-time journey. It is a go back every little once in a while on a historical dig and figure out the things that we might be still holding on to in terms of pain and programming. But when you figure that out, then you can move into the present. When you look at how you're living your life in the present, you'll find that there's things that are happening to you and that are coming from you, you're creating through your perception or through your behaviors, through the way that you think, act, and feel, you'll find that that's what's informing the present. And you'll find there's still discomfort or stress, stress from the present that is in fact pushing you into the screen. Now, if your porn habit is something that you still have, and you're regularly going into pornography, I want you to know, or remember, if you've heard me say this before, is that when you go into porn, science shows that your brain's gonna get all that dopamine, the pleasure-seeking neurochemical, while you're in the screen. It's gonna make you feel good for a time. But when you come out of the screen and you go back into your life, it actually creates a dopamine deficit and it creates more stress. So you'll have anger and irritability, anxiety, depression that you wouldn't have had if you weren't watching porn. So when you give porn up, it takes a little bit of time for your brain to reach homeostasis again, that natural level that it wants to be at, but it will rewire itself so that your life won't be as stressful as it is right now if you're still watching porn. That happens scientifically, but at the same time, simultaneously giving porn up, look for the stressors and the triggers. Do you not pay your bills? Are you overspending and under earning? Is your relationship in need of some finessing and some updating itself? Are your dynamics in your relationship creating issues that make it so that you're not getting joy from your relationship anymore? One major thing there is if you're in a relationship and it's a sexless or a very limited sex life relationship, that's a problem if you're trying to create healthy sexuality. If you're trying to give up porn and masturbation and you have a partner who doesn't want to be with you for whatever reason, that's a problem. You need to get into communication, healthy communication, and start talking about it and get back to physical intimacy together that you must have had if you are married or if you've been dating for a long time. And I talked to someone yesterday, if you're listening, hello. Uh, and he was, I said, you must have had sex at one point. If you haven't had sex in years, they've been married for like 20 years. They haven't had sex in years and years and years, or they do, but very infrequently. And his partner doesn't want to have sex ever. I said, you must have had sex that was fun ever. And he's like, yeah, before we got married. I said, well, you know when you should have addressed that, right? And he's like, when? And I'm like, as soon as it started to break down, right after you got married, not 20 years later of living in a life where you don't ever connect in terms of physical intimacy. But I will also tell you this, remember this, that if you are watching pornography, it creates a porn informed script in your sex life. And it creates that you're looking for that with your partner. And we know again from science, but it doesn't take 
a rocket scientist to figure it out, is that many partners don't want to be part of a porn-informed sex life. So in your journal, break out that leather journal again and jot down some thoughts about the sex life that you have with your partner if your partner's not that into it and figure out if it is a porn-informed sex life where you're trying to do acts that you see in porn. You are trying to use your partner as an object for your pleasure only because women don't want to show up to just pleasure you. They want it to be a connected whole person experience and honestly you do too. If you weren't watching porn we know from science that men want fidelity, men want connection, men want intimacy in their physical relationship. They just lose sight of that, men and women, if they're consuming pornography because it creates objectified sex porn-informed sex, as I'm calling it here. So, in your journal, figure it out what you got going on in your sex life and what you want, what's healthy. This isn't a matter of right or wrong. It's a matter of healthy for you, unhealthy for you. And if you're trying to leave porn behind, you also need to leave behind some of those porn-informed scripts and fantasy. But we'll talk about that at a different day. Okay, so that's the present. In the present, figure out what the stressors are you want to find a new healthy way to offset stress and boredom. And honestly, if you could figure out 10 new healthy ways to offset stress and boredom, it creates a comprehensive toolbox to learn how to regulate your own mood and feel good without having to escape into the screen. So ultimately what mood regulation is about, it's decreasing your stress in the first place and then learning how to deal with your stress in the second place. So again, in your journal, figure out what your stressors are. Figure out what the triggers are that push you back into the screen. And then see if you can get rid of them. So if you don't make enough money to, to be able to offset the spending that you have going, stop spending, start saving, cancel those subscriptions. So look at it, engage and approach the thing that you need to do and then have the courage to be able to make the changes to decrease the stress. And then secondarily, find new healthy ways to offset stress. Play basketball, play tennis, go for runs, go for walks, cook, do a puzzle, do crossword puzzles, uh, anything you can think of. Write down a list of all the things you love to do and do them. And they don't even have to be hobbies that are seemingly for you to go out to actually have pleasure. It can be things you need to get done that you find put your brain in a good mode. So one person I work with, they, they are like, I love doing laundry. Folding towels, towels is like so mindless for me. It puts my brain in a really good mode. And I'm like, then go fold some towels in the middle of your day so that your brain can come down and you can recover. Or if you get into conflict with somebody, do some laundry and chill out that way. Bring your brain down. It needs to get done. And if you find it soothing. And for me, that's kind of cooking. You know, I use my brain all day long and I have to cook because I have a million kids. So I have taught myself to enjoy it and be able to go into the kitchen, put some tunes on, cook dinner, and it's very relaxing. And honestly, my husband does all of our laundry. So when he's doing our laundry, I'm cooking and things get done, but we're both kind of chilling too. And so you can think about things that you need to get done, but also kind of offset your stress. So it can be hobbies or it can just be things that need to get done. The hubs likes to wash the car also. Um, not a fan. That does, would not put my brain in a great mode. Um, some people I know like to play pool. Some people like to knit. Think about the things that you like to do to offset stress. Okay, that's the present. Then third, what you need to do is to set eyes on the future. So many people don't have goals. So in your journal, again, think about in two years from now, what would you like your life to look like? If you're not using porn anymore, there's going to be holes in your life and your schedule that need to be filled. What are you going to fill it with? Are you going to fill it with those hobbies, with those things that need to get done? Are you going to get more work done? Are you going to change your job and get a new job and work on something that you care about? Think about two years from now, what do you want your life to look like? And then set some goals. You can set goals in your work, goals in your relationship, goals for a family, goals for finding a partner if you don't have one. 
finding a way to build intimacy and connection with more people, just hanging out with friends more, creating more of a network, which will lead you to finding a healthy partner, creating financial goals, being able to create artistic or creative goals. Think about what you want to be doing in two years. It's like GPS. You have to get intentional about where you're going. You know where you've been and you know what you don't want to be doing, but set your sights on what you want to create in your future. And when you do it and you set the intention, you'll be able to lead yourself towards that. And here's another tip is each goal that you set, and I recommend only setting three so you don't lose the forest for the trees. Pick three important goals and three things that would be life-changing for you in two years and Find the feeling for each one of those goals. So if you want to make more money, it's because you want financial peace. You want peace in your heart and your mind and you can sleep at night not having to worry about how you're going to pay tomorrow's bills. And there's a lot to be said about that. If you want to buy a home, uh, for me it was important to get the home that I live in because it's perfect for my family and it has spaces and I wanted to create comfort and I wanted to be able to have hospitality and have people that I love and enjoy to be able to come over and share that hospitality with us. Comfort and hospitality is why I wanted the home that we have. Think of the feelings that you want that go along with that. Okay, let's segue to number two. Number two is when you go through the past, the present, and the future, what is happening in your brain? So when you dip back into the past to resolve trauma and dysfunction, you literally are unwiring the porn brain pattern that is pushing you into the screen. You're creating more neuroplasticity when you resolve trauma, dysfunction, and you deal with discomfort. You get rid of the neuro rigidity that trauma can lock your brain pattern in. When you do that, you create more neuroplasticity and you literally raise the electromagnetic energy field of your brain and your body. You become a new version of yourself, one that's more pliable and moldable and changeable and improvable is the most important part. So now, when you spend time dipping into the past and learning the strategies, learning how your brain works and learning how to integrate and process your experiences to move through you, you are literally changing your cells and the function of your brain. So now in the present, you can use the tools, the strategies, the techniques, you can use brain training with the Muse headband to improve your brain performance pattern, which improves your mind, your thinking, and your body and your emotional maturity. You're able to feel. You can feel the pain, not die, and move towards it and resolve the discomfort by creating comfort in your life, not by escaping the discomfort. That's what you taught yourself to do in the past. You're gonna retrain yourself in the present to approach and engage and take care of the things that need to be taken care of so you can feel great and it creates dignity and integrity, the opposite of guilt and shame, which is what porn consumption creates. You're gonna become a new version of yourself and then guess what happens? It's easier to hardwire your brain into the future to be able to chase down the goals that you just set for yourself. So we're gonna unwire, rewire your brain through brain training, through being able to feel your feelings and approach and engage, being able to think and act in new ways. That's what we're gonna do, unwire and then rewire. And once your brain is rewired, you're going to hardwire in that new optimal brain pattern of calm focus so you can move into the future and rock out your goals to create your best authentic life. And you're going to feel so confident and so great. It won't matter what anybody else says about it because you will be you. It's such a beautiful thing. Okay, so let's move on to number three, 90 days. Does it actually take 90 days? I would say yes. I would say, and I know people contend the opposite, I would say that you're not going to be done with this thing in 90 days. Most people are not, but you are going to be well on your way if you are committed for yourself and you're willing to do the things by yourself for yourself, which ultimately helps improve the quality of your relationships with everybody in your life, but you're doing it for you. Because when it gets tricky, you have to be able to do it for you, not for anybody else. You're committed to that. If you're committed to that, you're going to learn the tools and the strategies. You're going to learn defense. Defense is how not to go into the screen. 
And if you've been going to the screen frequently, consistently, and especially with any level of intensity, you need to double down on the tools, techniques, and strategies to offset withdrawal symptoms. Withdrawal can be nasty for a lot of people, but a lot of people say to me who are doing all these techniques and strategies are like, when am I going to feel withdrawal? I'm like, you're not. You would have already felt it, my friend. But you were using everything and doing everything, all the right stuff to help improve your brain pattern from the beginning. So your brain has unwired and rewired itself very quickly. So then there's no withdrawal symptoms. The longer you linger around unwiring and rewiring, that's why you suffer from withdrawal. The more you use the techniques and tools and strategies, that's why a program is so important. Because if you're just trying to figure it out by yourself, you're gonna spend a long time in this up, down, back, forth, ebb, flow mode, and you can become demotivated and think it's not gonna work for you. It's just because you don't have the tools and the support. That's what science shows. You have the right tools, the right support. You can move through this thing and you can be very well on your way by 90 days. So 90 days, the beautiful thing about that number is that when people are in it, they realize 90 days later, they are setting the foundation for the lifestyle that they've always wanted that will keep them out of porn. So then you protect the foundation after that and you learn to realize when your foundation's beginning to crumble. If you do that, you can keep the foundation strong for the rest of your life, but you're beginning to do that within the 90 days and some people do accomplish it within the 90 days. The 90 days is the bar to set the foundation. So it might take you 100 days, it might take you two years to set the foundation. And once you get the foundation set, urges and cravings go down and go away. You have a lifestyle that supports dopamine from your world, not from the screen. And you have all the tools in place to reduce and offset stress. So you got it. You got it all covered for the rest of your life. And if a massive stressor comes and you feel a twinge that you need to go into the screen to offset all the stress of a massive stressor, you won't because you've got the foundation and you'll go back to it. That's how the 90 days works. So I would say that it's true. It's not fake news, but it may not be the end all be all for every single person. The more you commit early on and the more you implement early on action steps to think and feel in new ways, continue to help you act in new ways so you can succeed for the long run. Okay. I hope that helps you out. If you're looking for more help on the journey, please reach out to me, drtrishlee.com. If you go to the tab that says Why Porn Brain Rewire, it will outline the 10 lessons, the 10 modules that are part of my 90-day program that addresses the past, present, and future, unwire, rewire, hardwire, and it takes into account your mind, your body, and your true self. I call it a three-by-three three approach, and it's got everything you need to succeed. And I, it would be my great honor to be able to help you in the journey personally in the program. But if not, stay here with me on the podcast. The video of this podcast is over on my YouTube channel, Dr. Trish Lee, Porn Brain Rewire. Go over there. There's tons of videos for you to support your journey. Okay, keep rocking it out.